Now, our third speaker uh, will also be joining us online. Uh, I'd like to introduce Jutta Guteland. Uh, Jutta was... Hello, Jutta. Um, Hello. Uh, <laughs> hi there. Jutta, you were um, an MEP for eight years, I think, 2014 to 2022. You're now uh, a member of the Swedish Parliament. Um, in, in, in Brussels, during your time there, you were uh, a leading light um, when it came to setting um, the European goals for climate neutrality within the framework of the European Parliament. Um, but you also, I, I found out six years ago, you at least more than six years ago, you were working hard on endocrine disruptors. So certainly issues around chemical pollution have been something that you've got a lot of experience and commitment on. We look forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, and I'm honoured to take part uh, of this session, and uh, I'm sorry not to be there in presence. Next time, hopefully, uh, I will certainly try to follow you every year uh, from now, now that I'm home in Sweden. Um, as uh, has already been said in the presentation, I was a member of the European Parliament uh, for almost two uh, mandates, and uh, I worked mainly with climate and chemicals, uh, so that is uh, probably why I got the privilege to talk to you here today. And um, I, I was thinking a little bit ahead of this presentation what, what you could uh, get out of me that you will not get uh, out from, from the other uh, very experienced uh, panelists. Uh, and I think it is the political perspective that is my USP or my, yeah, what, what's, what's uh, a bit special about, uh, about me then, that I have the, have the experience of being a member of the European Parliament and now uh, work also in a national parliament, the uh, Swedish parliament, uh, Sveriges Riksdag. And that said, I will, uh, during our minutes together here, I will uh, give you a little um, expose of my experience from the European Parliament and then also maybe conclude with some advice uh, for, for the future. And um, I, will, I will give you the, my thoughts about what I think is important uh, when it comes to get the, the political um, the political uh, um, parties and also the members to be attentive to uh, what you say and to take part of this because I believe that if we should be able to manage the, the, the crisis that we see, the triple crisis that we see, and that's the topic of today, then I think we need the politicians to act. Uh, it will be very difficult if we don't, if we don't get the attention in the different uh, parliaments in the political levels that's important. So that's, uh, that's what I'm going to focus on. But to do that, uh, I will take you back. Uh, so I will take you back to 2014 when I was uh, uh, newly elected in the European Parliament, committed to work in the Environmental Committee, ENVI, in the European Parliament. And I wanted to have my focus or I wanted to have focus on climate and the chemicals or environment, of course, in a, in a broader sense, but uh, it was especially chemicals that got my attention. Um, and uh, then newly elected in the summer of uh, uh, 14, I felt uh, that it would be extremely difficult to get in this um, be able to be a member of the ENVI committee because as I saw it, this is the big committee, the important committee for many of the global challenges that we see. But uh, uh, it wasn't that difficult to be um, elected uh, to be a representative in ENVI because the attention was not very uh, high on environment back then. Uh, so I experienced that uh, it was quite easy to be uh, elected uh, to, to work in ENVI and uh, then uh, um, the, the situation was a bit uh, strange. Often um, in the beginning of my, my years in the European Parliament, I found myself uh, 
been engaged in debates about the global challenge, the big crisis, climate, uh, the, the, the situation on um, biodiversity loss, uh, pollution. And then we were not that many that were taking uh, the floor. And uh, in, in the big debate in Strasbourg, uh, often the, in the agenda, we were very late out talking about chemicals and, uh, and also then, of course, climate. Um, so um, often when it was our time to go out and take the floor, uh, the other members had already left and went home by hours ago. Um, the journalists, for sure, they were home writing and they had been, uh, been there in the morning with the high important debates. And then um, the, the, the people who took care of the building was kind of going there with their, uh, their keys, uh, thinking we should lock now, but okay, take the floor a bit. Okay, I'm kidding, but it was a bit like that. It felt a bit like that when we were out talking on the on the big crisis in the in the world. Um, me myself, I have been taking this uh, blood test uh, uh, show uh, together with a scientist in Sweden. Maybe he's there, Oken Bergman, uh, helped me and the foreign uh, also, also the the foreign. Um, uh, Minister Margot Wallström, who was also uh, in the past the commissioner for envi environment, uh, we tested our blood and we found that we had uh, uh, substances in our blood uh, that was on quite high levels. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a bit scary uh, for me to see that me, even though I've not been exposed in a different way than many other Swedes, I, I got uh, quite high uh, substances that was uh, could be damaging in in the future and uh, it's uh, uh, it's the pfas uh, that we have all around us uh, that is uh, uh, affecting people all over uh, and i wanted to get attention from the commission on this you need to see that this is dangerous for all of us we have it in our daily life it's in the in the sofa that i sit on now probably many of our, our clothing uh, have it in it and also the emballage of the food uh, so we are exposed even if we don't work with chemicals or uh, something that should be of high risk uh, many people are uh, exposed so I wanted to get this attention. Um, and on climate, um, another of the big global crises that we see, it was a bit the same. It started to be the big debate uh, about the global heating. Uh, we got um, attention with the Paris Agreement. Uh, we got more and more of the developing reports every year from IPCC who showed that uh, if you don't act now on the political level, if we don't have framework for this, um, we are going into a situation that's impossible. We are already there for many people, uh, but it will be worse. We'll ha we will have extreme weather. Not even Manhattan will be, uh, 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 be uh, uh, possible for not even the richest part of the world to secure themselves uh, if, uh, if the water levels will rise in this way. And it will if the global uh, heating will continue like that. So there were more and more people out there um, on, the, on the streets saying this. Greta Thunberg was one of them, started with her school strikes, uh, but also the scientists who, who reported and after the Paris Agreement, we got more and more attention. But still, in politics, it was a bit the night. Uh, we were having these debates silent um, in, in the room uh, where people <laughs> kind of didn't listen. And if you don't believe me, uh, I could say that I had my baby with me um, and the crash, um, the kindergarten was closing at eight in the evening. And still you can see the kid with me in the debate. And that's because we were always late out. So that's my first experience, the first five years in the European Parliament. Then uh, I got elected 2019, second term. Five years uh, uh, again was the intention. And uh, at that time... 
the streets were actually uh, full with people uh, demonstrating for climate. And the election movement got climate in, in focus in a very different way if you compare it to 2014. And uh, the environmental questions were high on the agenda. Uh, so uh, this time, the global crisis were, were there in the election movement. And it was a big summer uh, sh change then in the summer when we were supposed to be elected in, uh, in the summer because now every politician wanted to be in environment committee. So anyway, was the hot, um, hot spot. Uh, everyone wanted to be there. I got lucky because I already had the experience. So even this time I managed to be ordinary member in in uh, in uh, uh in the NV, and I got also to be a coordinator and I got to be responsible for some of the big uh, climate legislations uh, back then. And now I must tell you, now the journalists were listening. People were talking about it. We were first in the debate. We were actually uh, uh, first out. And the Green Deal was uh, the big strategy for the European uh, Union and it got to be the, the growth strategy. Um, it was a big start actually for something new. And uh, the, the years that came, uh, we managed to uh, also take uh, decision for climate neutrality. Uh, we adopted the European climate law. We adopted the uh, Fit for 55 that it's 12 different directives for climate. We started also to get more attention on chemicals and uh, um, uh, got promised that that should be also part of, of the Green Deal uh, and that the environmental uh, commissioner would launch uh, new, uh, new chemical legislation and uh, that we would probably in the end of the legislature get... Uh, overview of reach uh, that would be extremely important but also strengthen uh, some of the important legislations when it come to came to the endocrine disruptors uh, all that said um, this uh, this uh, if you look at it now uh, i would like you to see that uh, the attention from the uh, election movement gave this mandate new energy when it came to, to the global challenges that we see and uh, climate and environment got more attention in the European Parliament. I know this is the beginning. I know it's not uh, kind of fulfilled, uh, not for climate and certain, uh, certainly not for, for chemicals, but it was a new era, a start of uh, more attention of what what's, uh, is the big crisis. We also got more and more discussions after the pandemic uh, on the One Health approach and um, the commissioner got more and more aware about how these crises are interlinked. And in the debate in Brussels, more and more politicians started to talk about the multiple crises, how they are interlinked, and how we need solutions that's also addressing it in a holistic way. Uh, so it was very much a beginning. And if I would also say... Um, um, make you see it as uh, more something that you will remember after. Uh, it was also uh, a time when environment and climate was the first out in the debate. So if it was night in politics on my first mandate, the second one, it was daylight. The journalists were there, we were there. Uh, they suddenly didn't lock the parliament when we were taking the floor. Uh, we got um, to be, f the focus was, environment and climate, even though the pandemic. Other legislations were not that big uh, back then. Now then, where are we now? A, a little bit my, my conclusions now then for, for the future. I think we are back a little bit in, in the situations uh, where we were 2014, unfortunately. It is a little bit more, uh, if not night, uh, evening in, in the in the 
in the political uh, debate when it comes to climate and environment. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that to, to make us mistrust or get uh, sad or, or uh, be less engaged. Uh, I believe still it is possible to make this election next year uh, to change this uh, because I know that the crisis we see um, on health on environment, on the global heating, um, it is it's so massive and of such a scale. So it will show humanity uh, more and more uh, often uh, that it's not sustainable the way we live. And I, I truly believe uh, that people will be more and more awake uh, when, when uh, nature is showing us what's happening. And also for human health, we will experience how vulnerable our current systems are in protecting us. Uh, so therefore, I would um, give my advice to get a lot of attention next spring to the election movement to the European Parliament and make the, the politicians who want to be in the European Parliament aware that uh, the, the, their role is to make the European Union um, a force for a sustainable future for the One Health approach to tackle the multiple crises that we see and to be the people's representatives in the European Parliament with the, that mission. Because if it is that mission that uh, the politicians will feel from the election, then they will also put pressure on the European Commission to take a new Green Deal, a more sustainable deal for the future that will address climate, pollution, chemicals, in uh, health in a more one health approach for the future. And I'm sure uh, it is possible, but I'm also very, very uh, uh, sure about the need to address the politicians in the right time. It will be too late if we want the mandate to be a good one uh, for for these questions, it will be too late if we do it after the election. So I would encourage everyone on this conference to to involve many politicians in these kind of talks uh, the upcoming year. Thank you very much. Yuta, thank you very much. Before we go into our, our little panel discussion, I, I have a couple of follow-up questions um, for you, if I can. Uh, the, the first is, I mean, you've, you've described a little bit how we need to work now and get the timing right to make sure that this new era that you described isn't just a false dawn. Um, and you say, you know, there's a real role here in engaging with politicians um, before the elections take place. I'm just wondering, can you can you give us a sense of are there specific types of evidence or killer data, killer facts that that politicians need to have in order to be able to be equipped to then, you know, really make sure that this isn't a full storm, that this agenda keeps moving ahead? Thank you very much. No, I would not say that is um, a a, a certain type of uh, data that's uh, missing. I think we have the data. Uh, I think the evidence is there and we have scientific reports uh, that, that uh, should convince. Uh, of course, on climate, uh, the, the message is, is more um, clear or it's, it's a higher topic in, in the public debate. Uh, so there is ma maybe more knowledge. Uh, on chemicals, I would say there is still many gaps to fill, of course. Um, we need to know more about uh, pollution in the water uh, and also around us, of course. Uh, we also need, I believe, uh, to the chemical framework that was mentioned in the, in the intervention before me, I think we also need a, a Paris Agreement for chemicals. So we need to make that even stronger. But I think uh, my answer to you is that even though there is more need, of course, to, to, to give support to scientists, 
who work with chemicals and also give more, fill in the gaps in the water or make it higher in, in, in the global debate with the Paris Agreement for chemicals. Even though I'm saying that, I don't want you to read it as if I say that there is not enough data for the, the, the politicians to act. I, be, I believe it is. Uh, but I believe that many politicians are very much uh, sensitive to the uh, latest uh, uh, polls and also the latest news. And uh, we live in a very dramatic time, violence, uh, war, uh, energy uh, crisis, I would say, with the prices. Uh, people afraid of the future, feeling uh, more distrust to, to politicians or to the society. Uh, so there are many... Um, short time crisis that the politicians try to, to tackle. So what I think is needed is to find ways to interlink the global, uh, the global challenges and the global crisis into what's happening in the short time. So the politicians becomes aware that this is not something we can uh, put for the future. We need to talk about it now and make it part of the solution. When we solve the sustainable um, uh, situation to energy, we need to solve it in a way so it also tackles the global heating, for example, as an example. Thank you very much, Jutta. Uh, yesterday, you may have seen that um, uh, some of the organizers of the summit published a debate article, an opinion article in Svenska Dog, Bladet. And, and in that article, but they've made some specific suggestions, uh, but they also made a very uh, clear call to Sweden and the Swedish parliament to try and make sure that the, re uh, uh, the revision of the REACH regulation doesn't drop off the agenda. W what can you, what can the Swedish parliament do to try and keep up this, the, the pressure on trying to fulfil this chemical strategy for sustainability and in particular uh, uh, the review of the REACH regulation? Yes, I think that message is extremely important and uh, that's also what I meant when I said that in the beginning of the mandate uh, 2019 then we had high hopes on getting that revision um, and also get a more ambitious uh, re uh, revision than, than before because of the Green Deal, because of a more focus on not only climate, but also on chemicals, environment uh, questions, pollution. Uh, but that said, um, there has been, I believe, um, different things that have uh, made it uh, more difficult. One is that it was later in the mandate and that the political dynamic changed uh, during this five-year period. So in the beginning, as I said, it was strong focus, uh, but then in the end uh, of this mandate that we live in now, uh, there are many other questions that is uh, more uh, in the Commission's mind, uh, like the, as I mentioned also. Uh, so I think that's, that's something that's an obstacle and also lots of lobbyism um, in a negative way, uh, very much industry focus uh, and uh, not very sustainable focus. Um, and I think the Swedish government can act. Uh, I think the Swed uh, Swedish uh, government should act and know uh, that uh, it has a history, not this government in particular, of course, it's a, it's a new one and new political um, parties, but uh, Sweden has a history of uh, trying to get the, the chemical legislation in place and make it more and more ambitious. And we also have... Uh, KEMI, uh, the, the authority uh, that uh, is, uh, is responsible for this in Sweden, who is really also trying to, to, to uh, work with other countries uh, to, to uh, put some of the important questions on the, on the political table. Uh, so I think this uh, government should uh, try now, of course, already... Um, to yesterday uh, to, to make the commission uh, launch reach and uh, 
um, address many of the things that's weak today with reach and uh, like the cocktail effect, uh, many of the things that we have seen that is uh, making the, the chemicals sneak between uh, the, the flaws in the legislation, this government should address. And if it's not possible to make this commission uh, do something uh, uh, substantial about it, it should still be in the debate this year, because this is the wind of opportunity uh, this year. Uh, when, when we come to next fall, this commission, the new commission will already have in their mind what they're supposed to do. So yes, we should address the government, the Swedish government, to, to really act and know its uh, history of being one of the more progressive countries when it comes to chemicals. One last question before, before I move on. It's a quick one, I hope. If, if you were contacted by some of the people here today, to have a briefing for yourself and fellow members of the Swedish Parliament, would you be able to help them out to try and make those connections to make sure that this evidence is presented at the right time to the right people? I'm so sorry. It was a bit, I didn't. Could oh. you repeat the last? I'm so sorry. So Not sorry. At all. Quickly, would you be able yeah. to host some of the people who are the researchers here who have this evidence that needs to be put in front of decision makers in the next 12 months? Would you be able to host them at the Swedish parliament to make sure that those messages are getting across? Okay, but that's a very easy question. I will be honoured, of course. Uh, and I, I really also believe we need these kind of bridges uh, to, to the political... Uh, um, level, but also in the parliaments. Uh, so I, I believe you have the knowledge, you're the, uh, many times who, who are at this conference, you're the experts, and you know uh, how the reality uh, is, and you know what we have around us. You know, know so much more than, than, than we who work in politics, but uh, some of us got to be very alar alarmed, alarmed by it. We know that uh, we have thousands of chemicals in our daily life. And we know me from my blood tests uh, uh, that I also got them in my, my body. And I know many people do. We know that they, they give us diseases on, on the, if you look at the, the public level, it, it is harmful. We have scientific proof of that. Uh, we know on fertility, some of the, uh, the big public diseases, um, some tumors, uh, and also diabetes, uh, many important um, uh, uh, diseases that we actually try to tackle on the public level. So, of course, I know that you have the message to us how we need to regulate it in a more uh, precautionary way and make sure that we also forbid some of them completely, like PFAS, for example. So I will definitely uh, gladly host uh, any of you who would like to come to the Swedish Parliament and have a seminar or a webinar together and uh, make sure that more politicians get involved. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit on my way now, so I will. Um, that's why I was not, uh, it was not possible for me to be in, in place uh, today. But I'm warmly welcoming any of you who send me an email and say that you would like to, to do it in the Swedish parliament. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Jutta.